One year later, this week marks the first ever anniversary of the OSU homecoming parade crash. And I know, Abby, uh, you gathered survivors, first responders here in the KOCO 5 studio for a really emotional reunion. A lot of these people seeing each other for the first time since that day. And the first question I wanted to ask was, why did you decide to take part in this? You know, it's not an enjoyable conversation and not a fun way to spend your Saturday. A lot of them had to drive for hours to get here. So I wanted to know, why did you decide to join us? We're all nervous, but we know what an important time it was in Stillwater, and, and we'd like to share our, our views about it. It was, it, was a, it was a wonderful morning. Beautiful morning. It was a beautiful morning. Yes, it was. Beautiful weather. Yes. America's greatest homecoming. It, it is. <clears throat> and one of the reasons why we're here is because we want people out there to know that their prayers and their support was very welcomed. If it wasn't for their prayers and their support, us survivors would not be this far along. And we are glad that they were out there praying for us. Thank you very much, people. And I think it's important for us um, to come back and to be here to, um, to show how we're doing a year later, how far we've come. And, that, um, and just to reiterate what Leo said, um, to, to show people that their prayers did work and how much we did appreciate them. And that's what carried us through, um, through the tragedy. How are you doing a year later? We're doing great. Um, Hadley has, you know, recovered miraculously. <laughs> it's been a miracle, really. Um, she, she's doing wonderful. She's back to being just a great, you know, happy little girl and back to herself. And um, we're just um, thankful and blessed that um, we're, we're, we are where we are at today. I saw a lot of emotional reunions when everyone was kind of seeing each other for the first time. Scott seeing everybody, Denise seeing everybody. What was it like? seeing each other. I mean, it's been one year. It's been a very formidable year for a lot of you. What is it like seeing these people for the first time, a lot of you? It's like a reunion, you know, of old family members. Just everybody went through the same uh, tragedy together. We've all experienced it. And so it's just like getting back together for, a, you know, to, to like family. And it's also for us, I don't know about Leon Sharon, but I know some of I've met some of some of them personally and have had a relationship since it happened. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of them that I haven't met yet, and you know we had to leave so quickly from what happened. And we knew that you know a lot of the first responders and there were so many people that played such an important part that day um, that were there. But we haven't been able to say thank you yet. We haven't, um, and that's what we're looking forward to to homecoming is to be able to. Um, you know, personally say thank you to these people um, and their organizations for what they did. If this tragedy had to happen, it happened at the correct moment because that's when the National Guard just finished the parade. Yeah. The policemen, the fire department, the first responders were walking down the street and boom, it happened. The National Guard got together and said, hey, that's a battle zone out there. Let's go to work. <laughs> So everybody was being seen within 30 seconds of happening. If it wasn't for the first responders and the police department and the fire department and the National Guard, there would have been a lot more casualties because I don't know if I'd still be here. I don't know if a lot of other people, but because they jumped in it within 30 seconds, everybody was being treated. And that really helped save lives. And they didn't have to be asked to do it. They jumped in and did it. And I really thank them for that. Really do. You also jumped in and did it too, though. We have a little girl here who is doing great. I mean, you also were there at the right place at the right time. He, he was there, but he doesn't remember it. It was just that it was an act of his body protecting her. Yeah, and he, I, he doesn't remember it, but... It was but like. I'd do it again if I had yeah. to. Yeah. There was a policeman from the police department that got to Hadley first, and that policeman, I know who it is, but um, he came to us in the Stillwater, when we were in Stillwater, still at the ER, to tell us that he was with Hadley on the street. He was one of the first ones to get to her when she was laying on the street. And to me, you know, a mother that couldn't be there for her child when she was so terribly hurt. 
um, to know that a police officer, you know, took the time to go and sit with her, you know, when she was just in a horrible state. Um, and then also I turned to a um, Nash, an ROTC member. You talk about, you know, the people that were there that helped us. Um, you know, it was it was policemen. It was um, it was you yes, know pe it was bystanders. A nurse that was just in the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, it was um, the ROTC member. Um, they were everywhere. You know, people you know that helped. And mm -hmm. then once we got to Stillwater Medical Center, you know, I've talked with Scott <laughs> and told him. I think every time I talk to him, I tell him what a wonderful job Stillwater Medical Center did. Um, to, to help us and you know they were bombarded it, it was such a tragedy that it wasn't planned it just happened and so there wasn't any planning that they could do but um, you know we came running in and needed help and we needed a lot of help <laughs> and um, they just picked up where they needed to and did an excellent job of um, you know serving serving us Please, I see you getting a little emotional yeah, being here today and, and really seeing them in their orange and their smiles, uh, because the last time we did see them, our emergency room was more like, I'm sorry, it's, a, it's okay, it's, it's me too. Hard. Scott and I talked about this, that this would be hard. It was more like a MASH unit, um, and I never practiced in a MASH unit. Um, you know, our typical process is everybody gets their room, and they go in in their private setting, and so many people needed treated that they were in the halls, and everywhere you looked, I mean, and you just triaged and took care of those people that were so severely injured. And then, but the others needed treatment too, or the walking wounded, and uh, so that's so nice to see all of you recovered and um, just gives you a sense of peace. You also mentioned the bystanders, people who aren't doctors or nurses or ROTC. We have a couple of those here today who just sprung into action. That's Pistol Pete. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you believe it? That's Pistol Pete. Turn around and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Get a good look. Shave this mustache. He's He's so he looks a little different. He's not wearing his hat today, but that's Pistol Pete. And he was at the parade that day. And he helped people. Yes, just like did. your little sister and just like Leo get to where they needed to go and so did Mr. Nance. What do you guys remember about that day? Well, first thing when, when I got here today and shook hands with Mr. Nance, I actually had not seen him in within a year period. I've talked about him a lot saying there was a, another man in my as, truck. As I have also. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, and I've told people I have no idea who he was, but he was there at the right time helping out. Um, so it was pretty neat to finally get to meet him. What impressed me was he pulled that Pistol Pete hat head out of the truck and just gave it to the crowd so we could load a young man into his back seat. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember about that. The scene was, yeah, it was extremely, uh, it was almost like out of a movie scene. You know, people try to reenact that um, kind of a situation, but I remember that, that Again, the first responders were had this situation, and they were working, and they were working in a calm manner to get things under control. And so, good things were happening as soon as the as soon as it happened. And I mean, that's kind of back to your first question: why I'm here, and I think a lot of us are here. Is that was a dark situation, and some people were dealt a very dark hand that day. But out of that, the community, Stillwater, the city, so many things. So many people rose up and found a way to find light in that situation, and so I think everybody here has a story to tell that will make somebody smile or um, make somebody feel a little bit emotional because of a good thing that came out of it. The, the greatest silver lining of this whole cloud was how the entire community came together, and that's that's probably the most vivid thing for me. Um, getting there and start gathering information. I remember John Charles, our lieutenant, who was our incident commander on scene, was walking in and he was like General Patton on a battlefield. He just looked at me, because I was the PIO, I was there to collect information and go back to the station and start disseminating it. And he just looked at me and started, and just as a matter of fact, and by the way, he saved my life once in the woods, but he just told me, he goes, we got three black, eight, you know, eight red, and seven orange, something like that. And he says, the press conference will be at 12.30 in front of the police department. So I just went like this, and the whole time I'm looking around, all the helicopters landing on and setting on Hall of Fame, and just looking around. Mm -hmm. But 
the most vivid takeaway was all the people, just the bystanders who jumped into action, the ROTC guys, the National Guard, everybody who just jumped in and started helping. It was this overwhelming response because all of our resources were saturated pretty fast. They were gone just like that in this mass casualty event. So trying to get that sorted out. And then after I got the information there at the scene, I went back to the station and one of my jobs is I'm also over our communication center. And I walked down and I got to thinking about do we have enough dispatchers? Because when you have an event, we usually have at least three, sometimes four for the parade and all the weekend activities to make sure we have enough people. But I thought, you have this many things going on, and we dispatch for police and fire. They are going to be overwhelmed. And I walked in, and there were like eight dispatchers sitting in that room. It was off-duty people who just heard about it, and they came to work. And I remember Jackie Black, one of our dispatchers, was a new mother. And she was sitting there holding her baby, kind of rocking the baby and taking notes and answering the phone because she just heard, and she came to work to help any way that they could. And that's, that's the great takeaway, you know, for me, that's where I want my grandsons to grow up. It was a really, really neat deal. I made the decision to um, <clears throat> take her to the ER ourselves, and we had a National Guard uh, that a soldier that, that, that got in the vehicle with us and rode with us, and he said, you're going to need me. and. Uh, so he prayed with us along the way and I turned to it's funny that you say that because I turned to him and I said will you please just pray and the prayers that were going on you know it's just a miracle um, and I didn't I we didn't know who that that boy was until later that we asked to go with us and um, we know who it is now but um, you know because we, we were fighting game day traffic coming into Stillwater, and we were trying to, to we were trying to get out, and um, he said, you know, we're probably gonna have to break some laws to to go down some one way streets and get out of here. And he says, you're gonna need me with you, and and to get there fast. And so we, uh, he went with us and and was yelling out of the back of the pick out of the pickup, saying that I'm I'm uniformed. Uh, we have a hurt individual. Let us by and. People just kind of started understanding what was going on, and then the cars kind of started uh, letting us through, you know, and everything. I know Hadley, for the most part, doesn't remember mm -hmm. that day. Mia, and you were standing next to your sister, right, at the parade. Do mm -hmm. you remember anything that happened that day? I do. I remember a lot of it. Um, what do you remember about the parade last year? The parade was fun, though. What yeah. it is it? Yeah. The parade was, the mm -hmm. parade's always fun, and you were holding hands. Yes. But then something happened at the end of the parade. All I really... You were holding her hand. I was holding her hand. I just felt something kind of like jerk her, like, away. And my cousin, Dalton, was right beside me. We just kind of, like, looked around and looked everywhere trying to find her. We couldn't find her. Just get a pit in my stomach hearing her retell that story. I mean, you and I, that day a year ago, we're at this spot right yeah. here for six hours hearing these stories of people. But to hear all these people together in one room is just so powerful. To and to see how they're now all interconnected. Too. It was it was very emotional. You know, as a journalist, our jobs are to inform and connect people with the information they need to know, and that is what we did one year ago at this desk. But more than that, is to share stories and to let people tell their stories and. On a personal note, I'm just so honored and thankful that they let me and trusted me to share that story and share the homecoming reunion story right here from the KOCO 5 studios.